Okay, check this out. You know what this is? Or what this is? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you what it is. And I'll show you how to build one. And most importantly, how to use it. So you can record overhead like I'm doing right now. Hi, I'm Gordo. I like 3D. Okay, I'll tell you what this is. So this is the attachment for my homemade overhead recording rig. And the reason I built something like this is because I needed something to be detached from my table. Cause sometimes you might bump the table and those vibrations get transferred to the camera. Thus, I can always bump the table, slam the table if I want to. I don't really want to cause I'm never upset, but that's an option I have because of the rig that I created. So a setup like this is gonna set you back about 96 bucks. But listen to me, you can always reuse all these parts and you could probably buy one, a very cheap one from Amazon for about the same price. But this is very sturdy, unlike the offerings on Amazon. You could opt for one of the offerings at B&H, but those will start you at $149. And they're not as big. And from what I've seen, they're not isolated from the desk. So you will get the vibrations. So what I'm using is two light stands, which is $20 each, some conduit to go across to connect both light stands, some U-bolts to connect the light stands to the conduit, and two clamp lights and some light bulbs. So let me show you my current need. So the way I record is I position my camera overhead, my working surface, and what I'm currently using is this 3D printed mount where I attach my phone and that's attached to a conduit that I brought from my job. And that's attached to two cheap light stands. I can reuse this part that attaches to the conduit, but I have to remake this one part because this part will only fit my Samsung S20 FE and it's not gonna fit the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Okay, so I upgraded to an iPhone 16 Pro Max after 12 years with Android. I needed a new phone and the iPhone has had something for a few years that Android does not have. And that's a LiDAR scanner. And this is where the LiDAR scanner comes in handy. So here we are. So I originally used Scaniverse because it was highly recommended, but I couldn't get the app to work. So I switched to Kiri Engine. Now Kiri Engine is amazing. You follow the prompts on the screen, you scan around the object, and it does a great job. What I found though, is that you need a lot of space around the model so you can actually move around because I tried to put the model on a turntable and have the model rotate and leave the camera on one spot so that I could scan, but it wasn't doing a good job. I'm not sure if it's user error or the app is not made for that. So I found that if you put the model on a stationary surface and then you move around the model, it's how you get the best results. Unfortunately, my table is up against my consoles and I couldn't place the phone behind the object to get a good scan. Well, I did, but I was having a lot of trouble. So what I would do in the future is actually move the table to the middle of the room. That way I could actually go back there with my whole body physically so I could get the best scan possible. So this app does three passes, one at the middle, one at the bottom, and one at the top of the object. But I don't want to bore you with all the passes, so I'm only going to show the one in the midpoint. And once you finish, it stitches all the scans together and it gives you a mesh. Now this mesh I'm going to bring into Fusion 360 and I'm going to do a test. So what I want to do first is I want to make sure that the profile of the model is captured correctly. I found that when you're importing into Fusion 360, you have to specify what units to use. Originally, I thought millimeters was fine, but I found that the model was being imported way too small. So I had to scale it um, by a thousand because 
it actually needs to be imported in meters for it to come in at the right scale. Once the model is in and is properly scaled, it's just a matter of creating a sketch for the profile of the piece is going to be holding the phone. Then what you want to do is you want to export that small test piece to a 3D printed file so that you can test to see if it fits the phone because you don't want to print the whole thing. It's happened to me already. And then realize, oh my God, the phone doesn't fit. So now you waste the time and filament. Now that you're taking it out of the printer and test fit it on your phone, it's time to create a sketch of the final product. I pull out my sketchbook and draw the crudest of sketches. But in my head, I know exactly what I want. I usually just draw two profile views just so that I can remember exactly what I'm going for. And then I want to transfer this to Fusion 360. So in Fusion 360, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the old model for the mount. And I'm going to make a few modifications based on this new measurement. If you're not familiar with Fusion 360, it's basically a parametric modeling program made by Autodesk. It has a free license for non-commercial uses. And I've been using this for the last four years. It's very easy to use. There's a couple of tutorials on the internet that you can watch and it'll get you going within an hour. The other cool thing I forgot to mention about Fusion 360 is that it has a design history at the bottom. And what that means is if you make any changes, you can always go back to any time in the history. Anytime you made a change, you can always go back and make further changes or change your model completely to something else. I also want to mention that this phone mount is a work in progress. So if anyone is interested, I could post the models in Thingiverse or printables. So leave a comment below if you're interested and I'll go ahead and do it. Fusion 360 is created for engineering and manufacturing. So it makes it really easy for you to export your files so that you can uh, slice them without any problems in your favorite slicing program. After the model is complete, we export to Bamboo Studio to 3D print the model. So now that it's printed, let's do the most satisfying thing we could do with a 3D print, which is remove the supports. It might not look very satisfying, but have you ever popped bubble wrap? That's pretty satisfying. And this is just as satisfying as that. And success. Now that we verify it fits, now we could go and try to attach it to the rig and see how it works. And here it is. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. Please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Peace.